Hi, 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 hi. We hi, are on. We, and he and me, Phyllis home. We are doing some tarot today and having some fun. It's a little bit blustery out here today, a little bit windy, but not bad. Out in Stansbury Park near Willow, Utah. Yahoo, hello. Whoa, okay, jeez. <laughs> I'm just glad not to be in the wind right now, and I'm really glad that you're here with me, honey. So who's here with us? Ooh, that's a great whoa, example whoa, of this set. This is the chariot card. This is the Life Support Game Tarot. And I'll always want to show off the cards, and I never have them come up like the ones that I want. But this is their version of the chariot deck. It's very, very Monopoly inspired, you can see. So much fun, and I never get to show off the cards, and that one just pops right out. So the not interested place, four of cups, a card of refusal, a card of um, sitting around stubbornly and not seeing the gifts being offered, and the chariot, a card of balance and mastery of so the spirit in order to focus and move forward. But yeah. Okay, Steph's here. See. Kim's here. Tess hey, is here. Steph, hey, Brandy Kim. is here. Hey, Tess. Hey, Brandy. Hey, hey. Ooh, okay, yes. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. So already we're going to announce where I think we're going to do a, a night late show. night show. We're going to do a night show tonight it's, about. It, well, it's not late, late, but. About 9.30 our time. Yeah. We want to just try doing a show, seeing some of the people that we don't see. Unless it's nighttime, we'll say hi to them. But of course, we've got to watch a little bit of wrestling before that happens because, you know. Phil needs the wrestling fix, so we'll do that. But for right now, we'll do a show in the morning, then we'll put her do some errands, and then do a show in the evening, something like that. That's the plan. All right, Tasha's here. Hi, Tasha. Good morning. And she asked if you could tell her what's, what is good. What is good? What is good for Tasha? Everything's good today. What is good? She feels so good. Strength of, the strength, the messenger of slow and steady, and the messenger of acting first and think later. Okay. Tasha, what's good for you as you are learning discernment? This is the card of following the nudge, of listening to your intuition, figuring out balance, and not necessarily having to race right in. This one wants to race right in, and this one's saying slow and steady. It's almost giving me like when a horse wants to rear up and go, 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 and you're like, whoa, Nilly. You've learned when to hold back. You've learned when to balance things out a little bit more carefully for your own good, and you've learned that you can handle the harness and rein it in. And this is the energy. This is what's going on. You know how to rate it in and not overdo. So well done you. This is like quite an accomplishment. And it'll be added unto and added unto and added unto for you. That's she put, yep. potent. Yeah, I love that for you. Love it. That's right. right up. This is the Life Support Game Deck, a.k.a. Monopoly Deck. Phil got that deck for me for my birthday, what, three, four years ago, something like that? It's a great little deck. It's super fun, different than tarot. Um... Just as far as the imagery goes, it's not the best to learn tarot on. But, yeah, it's a great one. Oh. It's a fun one to have in the collection. Okay. Okay, yes. All right. Okay, that was good to see you, Tasha. Good to see you. Yes, Tasha is one of our OGs, so to speak. She's Very been, OGs. She's been with us, she's for, been with us a, for a long time. A long, long time. All right. Okay, let's see. We have, a, we have one for Kelly and then Kristen. Okay. Is paid for blind. So right now for Kelly. Okay. Will I be in a long-term relationship this year? Kelly, will I be in a long-term relationship this year? And this is a micro I'm doing with the Astro Matrix Tarot. Will I be in a relationship this year? Long-term relationship this year. <laughs> cool. This is that Four of Cups I just spoke of a little while ago. This is actually it. You can see them refusing a gift. You can see them sitting, thinking. This is also focusing inward. It's very, very important. But there comes a time where we get off our ass, get out of the pout. It's also the moody, broody, pouty kind of card. Um, there's time to sit with yourself, and then there's the time to put the big girl panties on and go out and do things and get things done, accept the gift that's coming forward. And this is showing up confidently, super, super receptive, but you can't just sit, sit, sit. This one comes in, and it wants you to take some action. This is being... The impetus, the initiate of something. This is starting it. You initiate. You, you are the catalyst of something. Will you be in a long-term relationship this year? This feels like that you are changing something within you that is drawing that towards you. I don't see someone else in these cards right here. It doesn't mean it's impossible. This is only three. But it feels like this is the, this is like step one. Step two, be receptive. Step three, start taking more action. It doesn't show me a straight up yes. It shows me that you are in a prep mode and you can't be in a prep mode and in the hermit mode anymore. So you're going to have to reach out, go on some blind dates or do whatever it is. You're going to have to check things out and take the bull by the horn, so to speak. This is something you get to do more proactively. And I'm sure 
what I recalled from dating and playing in the field, sometimes it just feels like a job. Sometimes it just feels like work. And if that's the energy you bring into it, it doesn't serve you. So you've got to let go of that and realize that you could have fun getting to know people. But yes, but, I'm trying to. Yeah, keep at it. Keep at it. Don't When it gets feeling like it's heavy or a job or a burden, you're not sending out the right signal. This feels like when you start shifting this signal, that's when it starts shifting for you. Let's get one more just to be super nosy. There is a celebration. You are learning how to do friendships, celebrate yourself, celebrate the friends around you. And this is something that's going to help you move forward. It's like, this is when confidence adds to your sex appeal. And she is the queen of the mojo. She's the one that if she gets that superpower ramped up, amplified and magnified, you got to watch out for her. So I don't think you're going to be shy of dating and playing the field. Will it be the serious relationship just yet? Not until your confidence gets really balanced and you're ready to put things on your own terms as the catalyst. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. So the answer is <laughs> you got to fix your shit first. So it doesn't look like long-term relationship right here based on the energy. Now, if all of that energy was turned around and switched within, say, the next two weeks or a month, we could look in the cards and see, we would probably see the lover's card coming through or the two of cups or something. But we didn't see that in answer and we didn't see pairs in answer. So that's why. Say it. So you're working towards it. The long and the short of it, or the not so short of it. Shout chill. <laughs> He's dropping iPads everywhere. Right. If you guys have never been with us before, Hi. this is Angie's tarot this is it. collection. This is it. All around and so, down. And here. And then there's three boxes. There's three boxes down here and one box kind of there. So that's all 40 along. different decks there. Good. Yeah. I love, love, love tarot. And I like Oracle too. And blind readings, I do Oracle and sometimes little tarot skips in there. But, um, Tarot is really, I love, love, love. So the tarot decks, I usually know the names of the decks. The Blind Oracle decks, I don't always know the names of the decks. So that's what we got. Okay, Ange. Wow. A mm -hmm. little bit of water for me. And then we can go to the Blind Read. Yes. It is a Blind Read for Kristen. For Kristen. Oh, let's do a commercial. Ah. Come on, you got to do that commercial, Ange. Commercial. The Blind Read is $20. You get what you get. You don't ask a question. Kristen's had one of these before, so she knows what the deal is. You don't ask a question. I go in blind. Used to be the seven card blind. Whatever comes up, comes up. If my guides want to come through and chime in, they will. So that's what that is. The year ahead is $30. That's two in the middle and the 12 months around and then clarifiers along the way. The $30 one question mini tarot is seven to 10 plus a few. Getting nosy. You can ask a question on the tarot read there or on the full tarot read. That's a great one to ask a question on for $40. So here's the sign for those. If you want the crystal ball reading or the bones reading or a past life reading, I love the past life readings. Those are $50. Those are my specialty reads and they sometimes take a little longer. So they kind of slide in. Tarot suddenly becomes very, very oracle in that. But here's how you can pay me and the E comes before the I. Can they see that well, honey? Yep, I will hold it. Thank you. There you go. Those are the apps we use so if you'd Kristen. like to get a read for manager. Okie dokie, Uh-huh. Kristen. Brandy, are you still here? We'll get to you if you're still here, Brandy. Okay. All right. So, I don't know if this is the secret forest or what, and this might be Chakra Wisdom cards, I'm not sure. And then this is Marchetti's um, Legacy Oracle. I think that's what it's called. All right, let's go in. Kristen, what does she need to know? Cards are hopping and popping today. What structure are you building? You're trying to build a structure here. This is very interesting. We're going to keep going with these. These are going to be in the center of it all here. There's something that your anthem has been. It's time to change your anthem. The Bluebird of Happiness is coming through. Um, fight song comes through as an anthem or... Roar it comes through as an anthem type of song. Those might not be specifically it, but whatever is your anthem song, it has changed a little bit. Something has changed. Something has shifted for you. Pay attention to the power of music and what you're surrounding yourself with. There's something of a storm coming up. There's a storm chaos coming up here, and there's a crystal cave. This is where you've been. You've already learned about trust, and now you're learning to trust your own sense of chaos. Well, chaos when you ride the storm, when you ride the wave. This is this is very much how you handle chaos, how you chase the storm, how the chaos is part of what you're doing. Sometimes you disrupt the system 
and you go in with good intent to do something and you disrupt the system in just the perfect way. If everything stays the same, stays the same, if, even if a pool of water stays the same, it gets stagnant and it breeds ick and it's not so good. So when you feel the, the need to change things up, to create a different energy in the atmosphere, it needs to be honored. The crystal cave here, the storm here, beautiful, beautiful cards, show her those. You've got the mystic here and it's saying the mystic meadow, the sanctuary. You've been there long enough. The air spirit and the wolf spirit. Yeah, this feels like this has been past energy, mystic meadow here and the air spirit. This is where you're, you're shifting it up. You're ready to shift out of this cave energy, out of the meadow energy, and you're ready to go do something a little bit different here. Now let's see what else is going on. Wolf spirit. Some of the family dynamic you're shaking up. Ooh, ho. Okay, sing your own song, follow your own anthem. If people don't like it, sometimes you just need to not give a damn on what they're saying. Sometimes the role that you're sent to in childhood is meant to serve a purpose to teach you something for a while. But when you outgrow it, sometimes those closest to you don't understand. They get confused. That's a them problem. That's not a you problem. This is something that you get to change. You get to sing your own song however it is you want to be. And if they can handle it and keep up, goody on them. And if they can't, well, that's too bad, so sad, fuck off. Because you are here to be you. Not to be their version of you. Solar plexus about individuating very much. Yes, yes. The path you choose, the happiness you have. This one says, I take actions daily to awaken my personal power. And that's what it's all about. And you need to disrupt. You need to disrupt the roles in, in the family. Not in a way that's mean or contentious. Just in a way that's true to you. You don't have to be sacrificed for somebody else to be satisfied. Then gratitude. I'm grateful for everyone and everything in my life, my lessons, and the lessons each brings. This is a beautiful one. This is like, around us we have a couple of um, circles of stones that are kind of Stonehenge reminiscent. And this is telling you that you have this sacred space. And it may not be a circle of stones, but you can create a circle around you. You can create the four directions around you. And summon the sacredness that is in the situation right then. For you... You can have stones that you would get like from the metaphysics shop, the hippie trippy shops. Put four in a circle and do your magic in there. And you wouldn't even have to, it doesn't have to be spread out big enough to put you in the center. It just has to be represented, representational. So if you're putting them out, so you have honoring the four directions and somewhat of a circle, that's where you can create some power in. That's where you can, um, I'm getting the word conjure from. This is where you can conjure from. It's how you get your magic focused, centered, and opened up. And it, close the circle when you're done. I don't know what that's about, but that's what's coming through. Okay, we're going to look at Marquettes. Especially if you're wanting to create um, new beginnings, catalyst type change, new starts. And if you're wanting to be, if you're wanting to be the lightning bolt that strikes the situation, which sometimes you'll know when that's necessary. And um, if you want to be able to do that, you need to have this energy honored. You don't want the chaos and disruption to disrupt too much of your own soul. So if you want to create an agent of change would be perhaps the more gentle way of saying it. It's not sugarcoating it. It's the same thing. But um, if you want to create and see changes, you have to hold your boundaries, hold your change first. Now, Marchetti, what is he going to show me here? Oh, 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 I love this. Look at this in conjunction with this. Oh, my good Lord. Now, this one. He didn't put, he put numbers on these cards and he has a guidebook with it, but he didn't put any words. Like this one has words and phrases. This one is beautiful. This is honoring the soul that you're nurturing. That child in your own arms is you. The faces that you have been, the masks that you have worn, the things that you have had about these various versions of you or these pieces and fractal reflections of you are there. And look at the emergence coming through here. Yellow is definitely what you're needing to get more yellow around you, whether like in spring, it might be daffodil. Some people might get sunshine. Some people might get sunflowers. Some people might get yellow citrine. But whatever it is, I would get I would get some canary yellow around you, big time. Lemon yellow, canary yellow, I would get that around you. That will help create more joy, more energy as you're going forward. And even in here, you're seeing that yellow, just like a season of change has to happen. Anything else? There's magic in that for you. There's magic in there. There is something about this color of yellow that you definitely need something if... I, I swear you could pick up a canvas and some like two dollars or dollar store yellow art paint and do something in there and it would be it would be great. It would be something that helps you align. Yeah, you need to put handprints of joy everywhere for you. This is something that you need to do. 
It's something that it helps you unmask, something that helps you be um, no more this, gentler here, and be right in this energy. I love that for you. That's what I'm getting. It is time for joy to just be exploding for you. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And it's because there's something here that is a more true to self energy. And you guys, you'll hear me preach that till the day I die. But being more of your authentic self is not something that needs to be done later. It's not something that needs to be done small. It needs to be done now, motherfucker. This is the time for you to really celebrate and love who the hell you are. And the people around you, if they can't handle it, too bad, so sad. All right. Sorry, that's a little bit rough, but uh, that's what comes through. Yeah. Okay, Hatch. Wow. Yeah. Sermon over. <laughs> <laughs> that was the preaching. All right, she said, thank you so much. You hit on the questions in my head every time. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. Yay, 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 yay. All right, as always, the show is being recorded today. I am trying, like, put a card out there, Ange. So you won't see Angie in this one on YouTube, but you will see the cards. Just straight down at the cards. So, yes, a Maybe new angle. Can... <laughs> yeah. Different angle, I should a say. A different angle. So when Phil's home, we generally get better angles and better shots and not so much blurry or like he said in some of my YouTubes, he's like, your head's cut off. I'm like, I know it is because I tip things down and, you know, wrangle things. So, all right. Wrangle. Uh-huh. Man, I don't think. Yeah. All right. Brandy is next. Okay. Where are her guides trying to tell her? Brandy, what are your guides trying to tell you? Tara, you're on deck. If you have a question, great. Tara, no worries. Uh, or you can just go blind read. We have Amanda Ellis's Archangel Metatron deck. This is from Rebecca Campbell's. Might be something like Sacred Waters or something like that. I'm not sure if that's the one, but that's the one. She's done, I think, four or five of them now that are beautiful. And then this is the Angels and Ancestors deck. Brandy. Read me exactly how she said her question. She put, what are my guides trying to tell me? I have Angels and Ancestors come through here. In this deck, it may not be for you that it's all about the angels and ancestors, but it's what I'm drawn to. If one of your guides is represented by ancestor energy or by the energy pulled through, just be aware. All right. What are your guides trying to tell you? And okay, on this topic, before we get into it too much, we have our ancestors always trying to help us. We have like our guardian angels and also we have guides that like say we have beef with um, one of our relatives. Like my mom passed, but she and I didn't always have the easiest relationship. It was beautiful. But sometimes we were more alike than not. So sometimes my grandma's energy and presence is felt. Sometimes my grandfather's energy and presence is felt. And other times there's people that are more objective teachers where there's no earth baggage on there. This is important for us to have guides that are helping us that don't have earth baggage in our same time frame. But they will feel familiar perhaps from another past life or several lifetimes back. But they don't have the current life baggage with them. So this is an important thing to recognize. And it's part of why we have them. Okay. Just a little bit of a Angie belief. You can take what resonates or not. That's, that's what I believe is the case. <laughs> this bluebird energy is coming in so big and so strong. We saw that previously in another card. And here's the signs. Look for the signs. Look for the signs. Look for, look for the signs from spirit with love. Now, the other day we saw a hot go by. And in one of my very first meditations, even I think before I met L Lucy, was this hawk. You might see animal guides along the way too and we were driving along and I've never seen a hawk fly so close to our car Phil and I were driving along I wasn't particularly asking anything spiritual but the hawk drove by drove the hawk flew by and it was like noticeable I mean and I'm like no come fly with us it was busy hunting it didn't want to mess with us but it reminded me of that moment in that meditation and it reminds me again with the birds coming through with the spirit guides that come through you might get, like my sister gets, a black squirrel sometimes. Now, some people will get a squirrel in their house, makes them crazy. Other people will get a squirrel in the driveway, scare the crap out of them. But my sister loves seeing the black nut squirrel. And that, I think, for her is one of, like, the animal messengers that helps her kind of feel connected. Whether she knows that or not, I don't know. She just always loves to watch those comments about them. So be aware of what your animal guides are trying to tell you. This is different than the pets you own that know you. This is a different kind of animal totem. And even if it's not the living, breathing, flying animal, it might be a representation of them that you see in, in art, in 
video in the store on a coffee mug, whatever. Did you put Bardo? Could be, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There is something coming through when you mention this owl and then the harp is coming through at the same time. It is as if you, if, if music will help shift things, shift the energy, which I preach that a lot too. But it's like when you want to do that, change your energy, change your energy first, then your head does the swivel, then your perspective does the swivel. Change your energy first, then your perspective does the, the swivel. Then you see the, the what I'm feeling is sacred patterns going on. He's here every night. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye out for that one. Keep an eye out. And and listen. Listen to if he suddenly sounds a little bit differently than others. He might be doing his regular thing, but he might be also trying to draw your attention or give you a caution. Also, listen for the coup. You you do have a lot of bird connections. There's listen for the coup. You've got a lot of feathered connection here, feathered connection here, and more than just the owl, more than, more than just that. Listen for the coup. And I don't know if it's pigeons or doves or what you got going on, but um, there's also the coup. Listen for the quieter birds, too. What else is going on? This is Sandalphon over here, and Sandalphon is saying, with you now. <laughs> yeah. You asked about the owl, and I said, yeah, that one, yeah. And then creation here, expansion in your life. You're, you're needing to see sacred patterns coming through. And look for the unusual that comes by. Now, what else do your guides want you to know? Let's take that bucket. Rising tide, she who flows, the Isle of Avalon. I love seeing the Isle of Avalon because that's a very, very a Lucy connection to me. This is priestess energy coming through. This is rising tides. I don't know what the seabird is, but it feels like there might be a seabird that has connection to you. King Tide, this is saying plenty. This is saying receiving fullness when you have King Tide. Then you have She Who Flows. There's suddenly ease, 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 and healing. This is what's going on. Listen for the cool again. Listen for the gentler music, the harp music. Like literally on YouTube, you can go and see anything. And sometimes you see people, and they're out in the middle of the field playing a harp for no apparent reason. And it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I definitely, yeah. Go go to those who would play the harp that would present the angel music, the angel tones, the dulcet tones. Yeah, this is something that's important for you. It welcomes in not just the wise bird or the ones that are the birds of prey and hunter birds, but it also enters, welcomes the cooers, the, the, the cooing birds. All right, all right. What else we got? There's a priestess energy trying to get through. Okay, that's something about here. And something about either moonstone or a crystal, a white kind of stone. Quartz crystal might be the thing, but there's something about here. Opening the third eye with a very clear focus when you're hearing this, when you're seeing this. Focusing on that stone like Lemurian seed quartz would be very connected to Avalon. That kind of thing will help you. Have some of that around. Have some of that handy when you're doing your spiritual work. Some people wear a small seed quartz right about here, like on a pendant or a necklace. Um, Luke Nickel made me a beautiful, beautiful necklace, and it had a kyanite. A, was it kyanite or pyrazite? I, the ites. <laughs> anyway, blue, gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful. Brand new, but clear quartz. Clear quartz is what I'm getting that is good, or this the seed crystal. Really good. What do we got here? The priestess energy wants to come through. I tell you, the priestess energy wants to come through. She wants to come through. What is she wearing? She's wearing white. Why? Because you're often in this kind of array. This is your priestess. The guide who's coming through is your priestess. The traveler's coming through as you. Give me just a minute. And again, a huge amount of bird coming through, bird coming through, bird coming through. You've done a lot of star navigation like the, like the owl that you mentioned. You've done a lot of star navigation, night navigation, star navigation, night navigation. It's time for you to do gold ray navigation. Not sure what this is. This is moving in a new direction. This is harness the mystic power. This is gold ray power. This is something that has to do more with like morning or high, high sun energy. This is what you're trying to get into. It's why the, it's why the bird sound is shifting to the cooers. The cooing birds. There's something about the morning birds that's coming through. 
be it dove, be it pigeon, be it, I don't know the name of a bird. It could even be like a magpie. It doesn't even matter. It's the morning, but magpies, I don't think coo. It's a cooing bird in the morning. It's more gentle and there's a, a reflection in the morning. You're being asked to reflect in the morning to connect with your high priestess energy in the morning more than in the evening. It's something that sets the tone for your day that needs to be done. You need to make a special time to do this. So maybe this harp energy that you want to bring forward, you want to bring forward in the morning now. Doves. Listen to those doves. Listen to the <laughs> cooers. This is what I'm getting. It very much is this. And this is where before you do your travels, before you start your day, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's saying anoint yourself with the healing balm before you start your day. The cooing and the gentle music, it's something that soothes the soul, helps you get the divine connection, helps you see the patterns, recognize the patterns, and it eases the flow through your entire day. This is something that needs to be honored for you. Sometimes you get down to things, do the nitty gritty, get right into the hard part of the day, the pow, 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 gotta get it done, survive, survive, here's the list of a million things to do, I gotta do this, da, 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 da. you have the time, make the time to make this priority for your own soul's growth, that's complete, Woo. yeah, that's big, that's really big, <laughs> but that's what I've got, I'm beautiful, holy cow, beautiful, 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 yeah, yeah, show her this one one more time, this is something important, just, just get that visual, and if all that does is help you find the space and place for your own self to be at peace for a moment, get that. When you have um, your own oracle decks and your own cards that, for you, have certain imagery that's right like that, maybe um, tape it to the mirror or tape it to somewhere. If there's a certain place you want to go to in your meditation and have that place enhanced and reveal itself more, put it somewhere where you can see it physically for like a week. Okay. That's complete. Beautiful. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. No cans. Woo. Yep. And Brandy said thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you. <laughs> that was gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. All right, Tara, you are up next. Do you want to just do a blind read or do you have a specific question? Just let me know in the chat. You let are me get next. Some water. And Susan is on deck. Okay. <clears throat> Blind, please. Blind read for Tara. Wow. You're getting a lot of um, feminine force in the graceful element. Um, There's an actress who has a certain look about her that came to mind. I think her name might be Jerry Ryan. I'm not sure. She played Jadzia Dax. And she also was on the show Leverage. And she was the blonde one on Leverage. Um, she wasn't, she didn't play the Parker character. She was only there for like one season. But I think her name is Jerry Ryan. That face flashes through. There's this graceful energy. Beautiful, beautiful energy. I don't think you recognize the beauty of your own soul, of your own self. I think that... Um, you don't see what others see. There, there's like a deep well of natural flow, of natural beauty and grace that you exude, that you may not know. You may consider yourself short on that, and you're not at all. There is no deficit there. Self-nurturing, happy yellow coming through, and fear coming through. Okay, give me just a second. This is the energy that it's like you see your own shadow on that wall. You don't see your own self. Your own self has known for a long, long, long time that this is more the energy, the happy, the joyful, the beautiful energy, the delightsome energy that comes through. Now, self-nurturing needs to come. And in this one, if you look, if you don't look close, you're going to miss her. But she's laying across that peach energy. The lemon and the peach need to come in a little bit more. I'm getting lemon and peach and then this really beautiful blue. It's not even a turquoise. It's it's a, a paler but beautiful, beautiful blue coming through. Like a cornflower blue. That would be right. These are, these are the energies that need to be swirling around you. These are the energies that when you think about these colors or you see these colors around, they'll revive the soul and they'll help dispel the fear of shadow or this 
belief that shadow has taught you. The shadow looks larger than the girl and it could create some sort of fear, but the shadow isn't bigger than you. She feels she knows gorgeous, gorgeous energy. Look at that. Release the dark wound and let love live. Here's that peach energy coming through again. There's an emotional healing time coming for you, sweetie. That wants to be there. And then trust yourself. Yeah. Again, it's, it's a new way of seeing yourself through different eyes. This is really beautiful energy coming in here. Now let's see what else we've got here. I think we've only got one in here and one in here. Divine timing. Again, this energy of gracefulness. It's like whatever it is you want to release and let go. Let the power of the quill assist. Let the power of the feather assist. The power of the words that you want to let go, it's time to release and allow those. And this one, it, I wouldn't do it in a burning. I would do these in a way that you could wash them away. So if you write whatever it is you want to release, I, I know this sounds a little hokey, but not everybody can just throw those in a river nearby. So you release it, you, you write it, you rip it. And if it were a burning thing, I'd say burn it. For your case, it needs to be a more release the flow. So whether you flush it or whether you send it on a canal or on a river or whatever, it doesn't matter. But I would put some water energy over that. Yeah, maybe you write it and just drench it in water out of the faucet and just let it flow under there and let that wound be done. Then let it go. The divine timing has come for you to open up now. It's that time. Very precision, precision, precision. There's a huge amount of confidence in knowing what you're doing. This feeling that you understood long ago, you recognize again now. There's something, um, I'm getting the past two o'clock. I'm not sure what that is, but it's past two o'clock, past two o'clock. So this is like in the afternoon that I'm getting something in the afternoon past two o'clock. This feels a little overdue for you. It feels like after two in the afternoon would be a time where you could catch a, a few moments of self to just kind of check in with yourself on how you're doing. If you're, if you're stepping more, if you're retracking your thoughts more into what you want to bring forward, or if you're just have old stuff kind of going on the, on the tape, old, old thoughts playing, you need to let that go past two o'clock. There needs to be a check in in the afternoon with yourself before the afternoon tireds get in, before the day wears too long. There's two of them that came through here. Makita is the one that comes through the strongest. Now this one is coming up with this one. This one is the one who knows how to war and to battle. And this one, it says, and I can't say this very well, but Abano Laka, and this is just as fierce a commitment. You've played this part, you've done this part. Then Makita is coming through, and this is observe, perceive, scrutinize, and she who sees, and this is what it's about, seeing again, seeing differently. This part you've already played. This role you've mastered. Now it's time to see a little bit different. Through a softer lens, a softer lens. One more, okay. We've got one more. The softer lens. She who flies. Dare do reach, Valeris. She who flies, gorgeous. This is what's going on. These line up like this. I don't know if you can see it well enough. I hope you can. These line up like this. That's what's going on. It's time for this. This is how this goes. That's what's going on for you. Ooh, that's complete. Gorgeous. Yeah. It's very much time. Very much time. Wow. And celebration wanted to slip out. So this is gorgeous. Show her this. You might as well celebrate because you know it's overdue time. It doesn't feel like it's scary. It feels as easy as shifting your car from first to second gear. It doesn't feel like if you can't find an environment. It feels like, yep, you're just shifting. You know how to do that. So that's what I've got. Really beautiful energy. Holy cow. I love that for you. And after the two o'clock thing, I don't know what that's about, but that's when it feels like you know how to change that. Maybe you've had a good lunch. Maybe your work shit is handled, or maybe the kids are out of school and you've got a chance to recover. Who knows, whatever. Whatever the case is, you get that moment of the day where you can catch your breath, and that's important for you. Woo. So thanks so much. Def much needed. Yeah, you're welcome, honey. You are so, so welcome. Okay. Right. If you'd like to get on the list, we have one on the list right now. Susan, who is up next. Blind okay. Oracles, $20, $30 year ahead. The one question tarot reads, $30 mini. You get around 7 to 10 cards. The full, 15 to 20 cards, which Angie always gets nosy. Like, 
See, there you go. So you're going to get more than 10, more than 20. I get nosy. The specialty reads, the bones reads with cards, the crystal ball read, the past life read. She loves doing any I of those right them. there. I love them. And also those are the apps. Okay. Remember the E before the I. Yeah, the E before the I. Okay. okay. <laughs> Dude, that's my commercial. Okay. Okay, Susan is up next. She's going to get a blind, and Tanika is on okay. deck. Is this Susan D, or is this other Susan? This is Susan I. Susan I. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get repeating names, so you got to know Susan I. Really? All right. Okay. All right. You're getting very astro -y type of cards. You've got the star temple. Not, I don't know which moon, blah, 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 that is. And then the star codes here. And you're getting very astro energy. It's as if star family is around you. Not just ancestral family, but star family is around you. I don't know why we're getting this. Or what's going on in your birth chart at this particular time that is a big damn deal, but it is a big damn deal. There are often cycles that complete in years of seven. Then there's other cycles that complete in years of 16. And one of the signs has a 16-year completion. Maybe Stephanie would know which one that one is if she's in the room, but I don't know which this one is, but it feels like there is some kind of astral completion in a cycle going on for you. Let's see what's going on here. This one is telling you eighth house, <laughs> endings and beginnings. What did I say? And then it's Mercury retrograde reinvention. That's what's going on for you. There is something that's being re reinvented, transformed, and completed. There's a completion of something. Often I'll get the metaphor of mathematics when you, after you've got the addition and subtraction thing understood, then you can go to multiplication division. Then after that's completed, you go on to like pre-algebra or algebra or whatever. It's like a leveling up, leveling up completion going on. The beginning is an ending and a transformation. Now this is the deck that came next. So I want to see, woo. And we're getting pairs for you. I don't know how many pairs we're going, but we're getting pairs. The ancient grandmother... Ooh, 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 ooh. The ancient grandmother teacher, I am the teacher that leads with self-knowledge. Look at how gorgeous she is. I don't know what, where I heard this. It's the Abi Yo Yo song. Um, I don't know if it's an Iroquois song or what, but it's Abi Yo Yo, Abi Yo Yo, Abi Yo Yo, Yo Yo Abi. I'm, I'm going to sing a bit of it. The singing doesn't come in real real well right now because I'm in different mode, but it's, oh, yo, yo, you, yo, 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 abi, yo, yo, abi, abi, yo, yo, something like that. This is something you can look up. This is something that will help repeat, repeat, teach, open up a lesson in that kind of thing, whether it's that specific song, yo, yo, abi, abi, yo, yo, you, yo, 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 abi, yo, yo, abi. Yo, yo, abi, yo. I don't know what that's about. This is a song that you need to find to sing to get the rhythm in your feet. It's not just the rhythm in your heart. It's not just the rhythm in your movement. It's the rhythm in your feet. You need to walk a pace with a certain sacred rhythm to get yourself back on the path. To, to get on that path. To redirect. Electra of the Morning Star is coming through. It says, I shoot for the stars. Radiance is my birthright. It may be that that was a lullaby. You might want to look and see if that was some sort of lullaby also with the birthright word coming through and that kind of song coming through. It may be a very old, old lullaby that we would know here on the planet as one of more of the native type songs. The, the star family wants to bring you back, back before you were here. Before you were here because you've completed something in your tasks to do list here and there's something that's moving forward. The reinvention time is coming forward. The renewal with a different part of your soul, with a, with almost like an opposite part of your soul, with a certain level of du duality coming through, yes? Uh, uh, something that is first nature that got shifted down and made second nature or was abdicated, and now it needs to come up again as first nature. It's a reinvent yourself very much. Remember, remember, remember. 
Remember, this is a word that is strong coming through. Remember, remember, remember. You need to let all the all the life words escape your mind out of this particular space and time. Remember, remember, remember. Things that came before need to be restored to you. Restore, restore, restore. Old soul. Very old, very ancient codes want to come through for you right now. Chiron healing, Ceres nurture, and then Palace Athena think. Remember, remember, remember. Show her these and just hold them for a little bit for her, each one of these. These are coming up in the three. Remember the remember the remember. I thought we had pairs. We're building. We're expanding out. This one wants to come through. Ha. Huh. Okay. They're saying prepare for the next eclipse. We've had some eclipses recently, but this is preparing for the eclipse time. There's color, there's color that changes and transitions. We've got color here, the Vesha Pishi here. And this one, honey, will you hold this one? If you, where that center crosses over, this is the space and place you're in right now where the one crosses and passes over the top of the other. And there is like um, a, a transition, a change, a switch of which gear you're in, a switch of which power you are in for yourself. And then here, the visualize. Visualize this as if it's the eclipse energy, like you've seen how this goes in eclipse. We've seen enough of them now. This is a powerful thing that you can summon because you, you summon a moment of pause and honoring for the dark side, what has been before the past, 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 that's been before in this earth life. And then you let that pass through so the light that's been around far, far longer can come through. This is the time to visualize this, visualize this. Sacred, sacred energy coming through. There's something about um, the daughter, the daughter, the daughter. There's something that's coming through as a, a very elevated daughter who doesn't know. I'm getting the words Pharaoh's daughter and Blower's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter, I'm getting from just this is this bringing me Pharaoh's daughter. Blower's daughter is this beautiful, beautiful song. It's kind of a, lo a love song that kind of ends like sad that he never gets the person, but it's a very haunting type of song. But I'm getting that there is this sacred daughter, this sacred energy that's coming forward, this, this way beyond what we would think of mortal ancestry, this star family ancestry that is letting you know you are daughter to them. There's a sacred daughterness and there's a sacredness in the feminine that needs to be honored for you. In the inner workings, in the mystery within, we call it feminine, they can call it whatever. It's not so much about gender as it is about the level of um, outward expression or aggressiveness versus mystery within. There's something mystery within that needs to be pulled forward, pulled forward to heal, pulled forward, pulled forward to move, pulled forward, pulled forward to move. That's what I've got, that's complete. Ooh. Yeah, gorgeous. Holy smokes. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I love that for you. I don't know what's going on in your chart, but something big. Or deep. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the time for depth. Like deep, deep, deep. Like deep space. Really, really vast, big, connected. And more connected than you'd even suspect. All right. Yeah, it's almost as if Ashtar is saying, and people, some people revere Commander Ashtar as one of the galactics of one of the galactic council, and there's somebody that would be in the galactic council as like kind of a big whoop de whoop. Um, if you put it in Christian terms, it might be like one of the apostles. Whatever terms you want to put in, this feels like galactic energy of a big sort that is very, very feminine energy. Um, that's that's what's coming through. Let me see this one again. My ancient grab, grandmother, and I think in this one there's like me rope. Let me see if there's, I can find it in here. I can't find it. You should get these cards for yourself. The Star Temple cards is what they're called. She's not coming up immediately. It must be that it is meant for you to discover. Because if it came up immediately, I would be able to show it to you now, and I, I can't find her card. So if you look up me rope, I think is the name, and it's in. This, I swear it's the Star Temple. 
cards. I think that's what this is. These might be other star name. I know the Oracle decks sometimes get a little bit tricky for me to remember all the names because there's so darn many of them, but that's what I've got. All right. Okay. Yeah, gorgeous. Really gorgeous energy. All right. She did say thank you and very You're interesting. Welcome. Yeah, you are so welcome. I know it sounds a little bit weird, hippy trippy. If somebody would have told me this five years ago, I would have been like, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's what came through. Okay, we have one more on our list, Tanika. Okay. All right, Tanika. Uh, so we are going to try and do a show tonight yeah. around 9.30 Utah time. Yep. We haven't done a night show in a while, and it grabs a whole different audience. So if you yep. happen to be free, come by. Yeah, come Turn by if you want to come by later. Say hi. All right. Okay, blind read for Tanika. Blind read for Tanika. You're getting a prettified fairy tale oracle deck here, and then a kind of a spooky, spooky, scary uh, black mirror type of deck here. What's going on? The glaze on the window needs cracked. I'm getting the image of like a glazed donut and then somebody taking what they would take with, to glaze that donut and painting it over a window so you can't see clearly out. The glaze on the window needs cracked. It needs hose off, washed off, washed down. The window pane needs washed once again so you can see through the pane, see, seeing through the pane. The, the, the word pane is shifting from owie owie to pane of glass. You need to see through that and then see through the pain, whatever it is that needs healed. It's why we're getting Black Mirror for you. Snow White and Rose Red, Rose Red, the sister love, Hansel and Gretel story. This is about survival again. This is about siblings, how you fit in the family and survival there. Tinderbox Soldier, Ambition and the Rose Elf Revelation. This is somebody pushing so hard. This feels external of you. This is somebody that would be as close as family, if not family, pushing so hard, not understanding you, and yet you needing to step into your own ambition, your own power a little stronger. It's somebody that, whether they'll ever tell you or not, they they would love to have some of the, the attributes and gifts that you have. There is a little bit, I don't even know if I would call it envy or jealousy, but there is a longing for and a wishing that they have that. It creates a little bit of a difference in the dynamic where you're very open about what it is that you're sharing and want to be sharing. And sometimes um, sometimes it does you a disservice, not because you've done anything intentionally off or wrong or anything, but because they have sometimes a little bit of trouble of getting why would, why would you be able to do that and they're not able to do that. Sometimes it sometimes it can come across as a sibling or somebody thinking you have it easier and theirs is always harder. Sometimes it comes across as, well, you have this certain set of gifts and they wish they had the, that set of gifts, but their gifts are theirs. This, this is a rift that can be healed and a different way of seeing that's important. Again, wash that pain off. If you've had a, a falling out with a, a sibling or a friend that is close enough that is like a sister to you, this is a time for healing. You're not here to be each other's keeper or each other's mother, but you are here to be for each other. She my younger sister. You are here to be here for each other. You didn't choose to be here at this time by accident. It's not an accident that you're both here learning at this same time. You might teach and learn in different ways, but there needs to be an acceptance of each other in, in the versions that you are now and the versions that will carry forward. The words are sacrifice today for tomorrow, the child I was meant to be, temple of my body, and guilt of regret. What I'm getting is as the elder one, as the older one, you're the one that had to 
do more sacrifice, learn the lessons of sacrifice. You're the one that had to give, had to perhaps um, take on more responsibility, mother look out for, and literally had to give more for this younger one. This is here today for tomorrow. So in, in what you were taught and what was patterned, you had to do more. Your younger sibling, the baby of the family, seems to always be so spoiled and not know it. But that's just because the parents are tired. But in, in your particular case, it feels like it really rings true that this was where you had to give up a lot. And I don't think your younger sibling even knows it. I am the oldest. Yeah. The child you were meant to be. Your, your childhood got shortened in some way because the child you were meant to be had to step up to different responsibilities. The temple of your body or the very essence of your childhood years were shortened because of birth order and because of the situation. It feels like there was a very physical reason that you had to be older faster. And then the gilded regret. There, There is regret in some part about the situation going on. I want one more on this one. Because you couldn't, you couldn't have written it or done it otherwise necessarily. The younger one couldn't have done it differently either is what's coming through. The younger one also doesn't have the choice in birth order necessarily. She's here in the now with you now. But the versions of who you are and who she is in the now is more important than the childhood version. There will be bond that is there from childhood, the versions that you are now, and allowing yourself to accept each other on the terms that you're on now, instead of going from these old, outdated scripts, expectations, and narratives. Hiding your true self. Again, this brings us back to the sacrifice. This is what we're getting here. This is the gilded regret one. But what we're getting here strong Hiding the true self. There's this hiding in this warrior energy. You don't always have to be the strong one. It's okay for the younger one to have to figure out what it's her responsibilities to figure out. It's okay for the young one to not see you as always strong, strong, strong. You don't always have to hide below the armor or below the responsibility and the obligation all the time. All this affects my adulthood. I am trying to heal and grow. Yeah. Keep going towards whatever is healing towards you. Drop some of this over-responsibility, the, the hyper-responsible thing that the eldest child sometimes gets so deeply. Drop some of this hyper-responsibility. She may come to other lessons. She might have to like run into the brick wall a couple of times more before she figures, hey, she could go around it or scale it or climb it herself. But it's not your job to run into that wall for her. It is your job now to heal you. If that means stepping back a little bit to be the stronger, more healed version of you, do this. Let her be the version of her that needs to step up in a different way. This doesn't happen to heal immediately and instantly. It does take time. What you can do is create the boundaries around you that you allow and don't step in to heal and rescue and ride the white horse so quickly. Um, let her have consequence of her action and let yourself have consequence of healing. There, there's no more need to rescue and this one needs to grow up by you allowing even though you could go in and make it all better and kiss all the boo-boos better, there are times when you shouldn't. I don't know how not to be the strong one in all aspects of my life. Some of this unprogramming that has to happen for us that are sometimes the older siblings, it is being strong for self. We sometimes get taught to take care of our younger siblings so quickly and it's obligation. We don't even feel like we can say no to something. It's always an automatic yes to help your brother or sister out, whatever it is. But in this particular case, you need to be reminded that you are not less important than the need of your sibling. You are not. Your need is not less important. Your happiness is not less important. You can't be helper enough, miserable enough to let somebody else learn how to be happy and grow up themselves. So now is the time for you to prioritize your own happiness. Now is the time for you to stop hiding your true self, to be truer to yourself. Anything else on that? Go into this three-point thing for the day. What do you want for the day? What do you want to experience? Not the task on the to-do list. Be very clear, this is not a to-do list. Mo is in the house. The three things you want to experience for the day. If you want to experience music, if you want to experience laughter, if you want to experience joy, if you want to experience drama-free, a drama-free day, go into this list. Make a little bit of a post-it note, stick it on your fridge or something. Mo's showing me one, two, three. 
the, the feelings, the energy you want to experience for yourself that day. Make that the priority. It doesn't have to be go get the groceries, da, da, da. It's not a to-do list. It's just the three things that if you if you could experience, it's not a task that it's a have to. It's just putting it out there. What if? And let the universe kind of help coax that energy a little bit more forward for you in a gentle way. Not in a, you must do this, check off the box, check off the box, check off the box. Maybe laugh at a good joke is on there. Maybe play a song from when you were a teenager or maybe play one of your favorite songs and, you know, dance around the kitchen, whatever it is, whatever it is you want to experience. Maybe it's you want to experience just quiet, just stillness. There is something to slowing down and slowing your breath down. There's breath work for you that connects you deeply to your own pulse, to your own heart. For me, on my wrists, if I look close because my veins are so goofy blue, I can watch my own pulse and spend a few minutes to just watch and observe. So you can feel your own pulse and do this where you can recenter yourself. But the three things you want to experience, Mo is putting that post-it even bigger. She says you're not listening. Um, I think she's listening, Mo. She's wanting to emphasize it. It's like the post-it has gone from this size to like this size. The three things, one, two, three, what do you want to experience in the day? What do you want to feel in the day? Not what do you want to accomplish? That's not the question. I choose to experience joy. I choose to experience laughter. I choose to experience peace. Those kinds of things. What are those things? That's what's coming through. Yeah, on the big post-it note, on your fridge. It, it only has to be, like, you'll know what it's about. It only has to be for you. This is where you start. This is where you start letting yourself be the priority again and not hiding under this cloak of I have to do the responsible thing. I have to be the oldest. I have to make sure everyone's taken care of. I have to be the strongest. That needs to be set down. That's out of date. It's not current anymore. It hasn't been current for a while. It's just an easy avoidance that a lot of us have learned all right peace and happiness yes yes yep and what that is for you doesn't have to match up to anybody else it's about you all right that's complete that was gorgeous and this is the black mirror and this is the fairy tale oracle very interesting that it's so at odds but thank you you are so so welcome so very very welcome all right and as always yes uh that is being recorded so yes, that we'll was recorded that. We will upload that to Angie's YouTube channel here in a few minutes, I yeah. guess. And it will have today's date on it. Tra la la. Yes. So yeah. I guess we're done for now. Are we we done will for now? be back okay. later on tonight, we'll nine tonight. thirty we'll Utah time. Later show. I'm saving my voice for a little later. So Phil and I decided we wanted to pull this off. So yeah, if you see us a little later, that'd be great. Pop on in. All right. Thanks, Cam. Thanks, thank Steph. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Mwah. We'll see you guys in Big about uh, nine and a half hours. Yeah. Maybe. On the flip everyone side, have guys. a great day until then. Take care. Take Bye -bye. care, everyone. See ya.